All right, it's fresh set of downs, week three. Bruce Badgley, Daryl Daniel. Man, oh man, I you know, it just seems like yesterday, even though the, the, the season started late, I mean, I can't believe how fast this has gone the first three weeks. What do you think, man? Yeah, we're in week three already. The good, the, the number one thing, like we've been talking about the last two weeks, is that, you know, these guys are out here playing. But, I mean, like you said, we're in week three already. And next thing you know, we're, we're talking about the playoffs. So, you know, so, but it's been exciting. It's kind of going the way we thought it would go to this, to this point. So I'm excited to see what uh, week three brings. Well, some of the things that we haven't thought that they would go is, quite honestly, it, you know, everybody holding their breath for, you know, losing games. I mean, District 3, it was bad yeah. last week for that. I mean, Burke's Catholic yeah. didn't know that they were playing Cedar Cliff until, what, Wednesday evening? Yeah, yeah. I and, mean, I mean, and then for them to go out and just, what, is they end up losing by a point or something? Yeah, and double overtime. Yeah, yeah double overtime. So – I mean, that, that's a testament to the coaching staff and having those guys ready to play and just, you know, so, um, you know, it would have been nice for them to probably get those points, you know, with that win. But, I mean, they played a, they, they played an excellent game. They looked very good in that game. Yeah, and, uh, you know, we'll get into some of those games, you know, starting out here. But, um, you know, I've just been kind of taken aback by the fact that, you know, we've seen – so many schools that have tested positive. Now we have all these schools that are, you know, starting fall back up. Now we have District 11 saying that they're not going to play in the PIAA tournament. I mean, right. it's such a changing landscape of high school football week to week, which is totally oppo of what we're accustomed to two here in Pennsylvania. What are your thoughts? Yeah, that's going to be interesting because, you know, I think what with Corona and the way things are going right now, um, you know, there's even talk of, you know, the Philadelphia League going back to their own thing, uh, WPIL uh, doing their own thing. So it's a lot of – Corona is the, – the, the COVID-19 is, has been doing a lot of different things. It's caused a lot of different issues and, and – in some things, some instances is good because it's forcing people to, to, to work outside their comfort zone. Um, and in some instances, things like this happen. So, um, you know, it's, it's making people really have to think differently. And it's, it, when I first heard that report, I was like, wow, you know. So um, this, this 2020 has to hurry up and get over with so we can move on. <laughs> we need to get out of 2020 fast. I think the most interesting thing was District 11 basically bagging it. Uh, yeah. out of the out of the tournament, at least for football anyway, um, to say that, you know, what meant more to them this year, and obviously they got a late start and what have you, um, I think, you know, it's giving them a chance. I think that they want to play by their own rules. And mm -hmm. it's going to be very interesting if, if some other leagues don't follow that too because – the the PIAA wants to have their tournament done by Thanksgiving, which means everybody's got to have their games done by the end of October. Well, I don't see how these teams that are starting their season now are going to get any kind of a season, you know, before yeah. that. So I can understand, like, how maybe some of these leagues might decide that, you know what, we're just going to do our own thing this year and, uh, you know, forget about the PIAA tournament. What are your thoughts about that? Right, because – Again, I guess, you know, by the time it's for the, the PIAA to start, some team may have two or three games, and how are you going to determine who has enough points or four or five games at the most, who has enough points to move on to the next round? So if everybody – if you have, like, 15 undefeated teams, how do you determine who goes on to the next round? So, yeah, that is tough. Uh, I mean, like I said, this 2020 needs to hurry up and be over so we can kind of get back to some normalcy. Obviously, there would be a, a, a new normal, so to speak, but – you know, we got to get out of this this 2020 and, and, and get back to to how things were. Yeah, I think that's it. well, whether it's football or whether it's life in general, I think everybody right. wants to get out of it. Uh, I mean, uh, I you know, I was out covering some events today, and the talk was, "Well, what's going to happen in the winter?" I said, "Well, let's get through the fall first yeah. and figure out yeah. what happens." 
I'd be crazy. Absolutely. All, All right. right. Yeah, let's not, <laughs> let's not <laughs> yeah, jump too let, fast. Let, I mean, we're, right we're still a long way from getting through the fall schedule and a long way from deciding whether or not there's any kind of PIAA tournament or not. So, and, you know, the funny thing is, is, is that I don't even think the WPIAL has even determined what the, uh, what the criteria is going to be for any teams to move on to the PIAA tournament yet. And, and they've played yeah. what, three games? I mean, how do you like, yeah. you know, how do you go through a partial season and still not know exactly like how or why or what your playoffs are going to be and how's it going to move into the mm -hmm. PIAA. The playoffs, my understanding is that the number of playoff teams are going to depend on whether there's a PIAA. So if there's not a PIAA, right. I guess there's going to be eight. And if there is, there's going to be four. And they still don't even know what criteria they're going to use to determine those four or eight teams. So nice. just go out there and play. I mean, I think just like I'll, you talked about, you, you just talked about, yeah. uh, and even, you know, when I was, I covered the Brooks Catholic Cedar Cliff game last week, you know, the coach for Cedar Cliff, he said, the only thing you guys are guaranteed is tonight. So go out there and play like it's the only game and the only game you're going to play. And I totally agree with coach there that, that that's got to be the mantra for these teams moving forward. What do you think? Absolutely. So, um, we talked about it a little bit last week. We just got to focus week to week. Only thing that matters is this week. Next week, the only thing that's going to matter is that week. So the, the, the fact that we have season, especially for the 2021s, like we talked about, it gives them an opportunity to get something on film for the coaches. Yeah, exactly right, for all of these players. Mm -hmm. So, um, And one of the games that we, you know, we, we talked about last week and featured uh, was actually – uh, one had, when we went on the air last Wednesday had just basically been finalized. And that uh, CD East was originally going to play Governor Mifflin. Governor Mifflin had to suspend operations. They're back now. But they had to travel to Exeter. And, you know, Exeter, a nice job, 27-7 to 7 win. Right. Yeah, I, I was able to watch that game. They, they played very well. They were very physical. Um, J.R. Strauss, Ty Yoke running the ball. Uh, the quarterback made some plays running, but that defense all the way around, they made a lot of plays. Um, it was impressive to see, you know, shutting down because Central Dolphin East you generally has a lot of good athletes. So, um, but Central, I mean, but Exeter did a great job, you know, staying, getting them in third and long situations, uh, protecting the ball, uh, going after the ball, stripping the ball, uh, getting turnovers. So, I mean, it was a very, very good game from that perspective. Yeah, uh, I think even, you know, they, they, I think that they, uh, Exeter had, a, a, you know, a little bit of a, you know, kind of a miscue or whatever like that toward the end of the first half. But, uh, yeah. boy, they just played really powerful game. I think that that sends a message, uh, you know, to everybody else on the quality of that team. Um, CD sent a really powerful message, too, that they weren't messing around. I mean, 62 to 10. Over Chambersburg. Yeah, yeah, we knew that coming in. I mean, that that team is on a mission this year. Uh, they got a taste of that state championship. So, whether you know we 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 get to the PIAA state championship or or, or whatever it is, they're going through their season as if uh, each game may be for the state championship, and they there's they set the tone early. Yeah, hard to imagine anybody's really going to touch them, and even I mean, uh, you know, mid pen. Uh, you know, Commonwealth there. And, you know, uh, our buddy Coach Joe Mays called Wilson's 31-28 to 28 win over Mannheim Township one of the gutsiest performances that he'd ever seen. And he's seen all the Wilson teams. Um, you know, what were your thoughts on Wilson pulling out that win at Mannheim Township? Yeah, Jaden Jones, I mean, he had a, a phenomenal game. I mean, he broke – I mean, there was one time, I think it was third and 37, um, he, he had a big run that to get a first down, which was like, I had no idea how he made that run. There was another run. He got into the pile. I think it might've been a fourth and one or maybe a third and one. And he got into the pile, got, and everybody, you saw everybody stop. And all of a sudden he breaks out the back end and then takes off for a big run. So he, um, he did a great job. 
and then Mason Leonard, he, he had a big run uh, late in the game to, to, to go up 31-21. So, I mean, they did a good job of kind of corralling Anthony Ivey. He had a big play at the end of the game there, but they did a good job uh, corralling those guys, playing uh, cover two and um, keeping everything in front of them. You know, and uh, kind of the – uh, the game that, you know, we were highlighting last week in York Adams, um, and we kind of disagreed on. You felt, you know, William Penn, York William Penn was 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 there to, you know, be that team that was going to challenge uh, Central York out there. And their 21-7 win at Spring Grove, I, boy, it's hard to argue. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, again, like I, 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 I kind of had an idea – of what York was working with this one, what uh, York William Penn was working with this year. And um, I just thought that athleticism, they're very well coached. I just, I just thought, uh, you know, Spring Grove did look good, but, you know, w William Penn can do a lot more than just run the ball. So, and I think that was, was going to make it tough on that game. You know, you spoke about, and one of the teams that we talked about and have talked about uh, is Altoona. And, you know, yes, they sir. had a very impressive win, you know, over Cumberland Valley. I mean, are they ready? Do you think that they're anywhere close to the league of Central Dauphin to be able to, you know, maybe challenge them or is looking at, you know, maybe possibly elevating themselves to, you know, the upper echelon there, the mid pen? I, I think they're getting close. Um, I haven't gotten a chance to. Uh, talk with him this year and, and see his team. Usually um, at Coach Contapio's camps, we get a chance to talk a little bit. But uh, I, I think he's getting close. He's always been a great play caller. He's very been, uh, always been a good – done a great job for the offensive end. They're, that defense is coming around. But I, I think – and then he's, a, he just, he's just a great coach. So he's going to be able to get those players uh, to buy into the system. Um, and then uh, there's lots of athletes out in that area. So I, I think – this year, they're going to really start to turn the corner, and I think next year might be the year that, that um, they make that big jump. But um, this year's again, this year's not over, so they'll, they'll, they're they going to be there. But I, I just kind of had a feeling that with all the new things that's going on coming to Valley, they, they're going to be ready to take that jump this week. I mean, last week, I'm sorry. You know, that's all. Uh, Altoona, there are so many good athletes out in that area uh, that it's been mm -hmm. uh, it's been – I'm sure very difficult, not only for the fans, but the community, that that team has been kind of, you know, struggling over the last few years. It's great to see them elevate um, to become a factor, really, you know, in the mid-pen here. So that's obviously going to be a team that we're going to keep our eye on the rest of the year. Just like we've been talking about Columbia, um, you know, one of your preseason picks to kind of emerge uh, this year. And they had another big win last week, 44 to 23 over Pequa Valley. A lot of athletes on that team. A lot of athletes on the team. And I just feel like they're kind of playing where they should be. It was kind of like, um, you know, they're kind of like in Steel High's uh, situation. Um, so he, you know, being where they are now, the athleticism they have there, the coaching staff they have, they have unbelievable coaching staff that um, he's very passionate about football and he loves what he does. And those kids are buying in the community's buying as a small uh, tight knit community. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can see them going out there and, and, and getting through this t t uh, season and challenging for the districts. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, I think that they've got, you know, the doors wide open for them, I believe. Um, and, you know, we kind of went back and forth on Cocalico and Mannheim central. Um, how impressive was Cocalico's 35 to 19 win over Mannheim Central last week to you? Yeah, they they were very solid. Mannheim Central, I think, made a lot of mistakes uh, in that game. Um, and Cocalico, as they always do, they just they take advantage of mistakes because they're very with the system and, and the offense they run. Uh, it was kind of like plug and play. And those guys stepped in. Uh, they still have a very good offensive line. Those guys stepped in. They just they just kept rolling. Uh, they didn't miss a beat. They looked very athletic. Um, and, and just like I said, Mannheim Central made a lot of mistakes that game, which is not like them. Uh, but I think they'll bounce back and be ready to roll. And a team that we both like and that you're very familiar with, 
is Lampett or Strasburg. Um, kind of in a, you know, a quarterback battle there. Uh, came out with another impressive win, uh, 42-20 to 20 over Lebanon. Yeah. And again, Lebanon's quarterback, and they had a, a star wide receiver, and they did a good job in covering those guys, making plays. The defense did a good job of uh, pressuring the quarterback, had him on the move a lot. And, you know, tonight we'll get a chance to talk to Coach Mannion um, about his team uh, and, and the things they're doing over there. But he, you know, they did a great job on defense. Uh, Sean McTaggart did a great job running the ball, throwing the ball. You know, Austin, Ian, uh, Matt Weiss did a great job on defense. Nick is holding down that middle. Um, Alex Knapp is very athletic. He made a lot of plays running the ball, catching the ball. So, I mean, they have a very good team, and they're very deep. And then Parker, um, he just he, he just um, doing a great job playing the DM position, uh, also as well as tight end, uh, along with Bo, uh, Bo Heiser. So, I mean, they're, they're, that, that team is very loaded. Um, they're focused. And with Sean being back and this being his senior year, you know, he's not, he's not going to allow that team to, to, to miss a beat. Well, speaking of Coach Mannion, actually perfect timing. Uh, the uh, head coach of Lampeter Strasburg, John Mannion, getting set to join the program here, our second guest that we've had this season. John, there he is. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's okay. <laughs> you know, great timing because actually we were just uh, recapping uh, your win last week against Lebanon you know, 42 to 20. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. I know you, you know, Daryl uh, pretty well. And, and, you know, for me, uh, I've been a fan kind of from afar, but uh, you know, why don't you talk about your two and O start and why don't you talk about the expectations for your program now after the great season you had last year? Hey, that's our practices have been a little rough because we're, we're pretty deep. Uh, we're going a lot of starters on O against starters on D, and we're right. having a tough time getting getting the job done against our own players. So it's been so, a lot of fun in that regard. Uh, the expectation is to try to get back to what we did, but the start of this season just been crazy with losing a scrimmage and starting late and just trying to get these kids focused has been a job in itself with all that's going on around them. Yeah, that is. Daryl, you got a question for Coach? Yeah, Coach, obviously we, we spent a lot of time um, talking uh, so this offseason, and, and, and we were able to get that combine done this summer, which I think went very well with your staff. Um, what do you feel the biggest difference in your team uh, from this year to the last year is? Uh, I think we have toughness. But we're, we're still trying to find a lot of that. We, we lost the linebacking core. That was oh, yeah. really solid. Uh, all state players up the middle. We replaced them with pretty darn good football players. But I think a lot of guys are feeling out the new positions, uh, mm -hmm. feeling out like their new role on the team. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a good thing going, but I don't think we realize how good yet. Yeah, right. And I think the biggest thing, too, is versatility because you have guys moving yeah. pieces. You can move guys a lot of a lot of different spots, you know, like we talked about a little bit this summer. And I think that's what's going to make that team effective. So now if everybody buys in, like we've been talking about all summer, you know, it's a team effort. So wherever they, they need you, you're just moving guys around and, dip, you know, moving guys to slots they might not have played before. And I think, you know, with Nap and then you got your two running backs there and just so much versatility. And, and, and I think that's going to make you guys even more – more powerful as you move forward through these uh, these next couple of weeks. Yeah, it's tough to get everybody the football as much as right. you'd like. Uh, they handle it pretty well. Uh, mm -hmm. They block well for each other. Uh, we had eight different guys catch the ball last last week in in meaningful situations. We love the kids that we have. It, even the kids themselves are incredibly well rounded. Like we have right. guys that, that can block, catch. We we can move them all over the place. It's almost interchangeably. Uh, so it's just trying to put kids in the right place. Right. And, and I saw last week Alex, Alex Snap had a, had a big game, and I love his versatility. He can run the ball for you. He can play out of that slot. Um, and then, again, the thing that, you know, we always talk about offense, but I think people need to realize your defense is just as good. You know, and those guys are very physical. You're big up front. 
You know, you got Bo there, you got Nick, Ken Parker, the guy that's kind of mm-hmm. hung sung. We talked about him a little bit this summer too. Um, you know, his 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 impact at the DN, how intelligent he is. You know, what are some of the things that you think uh, is going to really help you defensively as you move forward as well? Again, like those guys you just said, they're all in first year roles. Yeah. Uh, Nick started last year, but now he's a middle guy instead of an outside guy. Bo's uh, yeah. went from handing the dirt to playing some linebacker. Parker played the position and he played it well. Uh, now he's the go-to guy. He's the one that's going to be expected to have those high expectations that you talked about earlier. Uh, he's a leader of the defense now, not just another part. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is athleticism. He had two sacks in each of the first two games. He he gets after it, yet he's smart enough to read a screen and fall right, back right. in and, and play play tough, hard-nosed football. All right. Well, Coach, you have a Lancaster Catholic up this week. What are you expecting from the Crusaders? They're kind of like – finally, we don't have like – if somebody's in the middle. <laughs> uh, we, we played out Lebanon. We throw the ball over the place. A uh, week before that is Solanco. It's like two very specific game plans. So, in one way, you're getting somebody that's a little bit more like us. So, in practice, it was a little bit easier for our scout teams to run what they do because it's a lot more like what we do. Uh, but at the same time, so it's, it's a it's an old rival game for us. I don't know if it is for the kids yet. So it's, it's good to get back at it with them. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, Coach. We know you're busy. Uh, we won't take up any more of your time. We really appreciate you joining the show. And uh, look, best of luck the rest of the year. Um, you know, everybody was rooting for you here in District Three in the PIAA last year, and. Uh, you know, we'll see how it goes. Everybody stay safe out there, and we'll see you down the road. Okay, Coach? Thank you very much, Bruce. And, Daryl, thanks for all the work you did to help us get this town on the field this year. I appreciate it, sir. And I'll see you guys soon. All right. All right. Thank thanks you. a lot, Coach. Bye now. All right. That was uh, John Mannion, obviously a, a well-versed in uh, Zoom. Because he got yeah. in and he got out without right, right, any right. effort, <laughs> which, right, right, right. <laughs> which was better. <laughs> which was better than our first week guest, where we had to like record the show over again. So, right, right. but that was fantastic. No, uh, you know, a great, uh, great to have coaches on. That's what I love about our format now, pal. I mean, it really right. does give us the flexibility. These coaches are so busy, um, right. and you know, you get ten minutes of these guys' time in a given week. I mean, it's so valuable. Look, they've got families themselves that they've got to pay attention to. So we really appreciate, uh, you know, all the coaches that'll be coming on this year. I know that we plan on doing this, you know, every week. What do you think about that, man? Actually having coaches on, on this show. Yeah. I mean, that, that says a lot to, to the, I mean, credit to you, of course, and just them understanding what we're trying to get done here and that we really love the game and we're, you know, we're true to what we're doing um, and I'm just very fortunate that I've been able to work with a lot of these coaches and I have probably like nine players off his team I worked. So I've been at the practices. We did, like I said, we, we went over there and I ran a combine with those guys. So, um, it just, it's just an awesome thing to be able to have those contacts and, and then for them to obviously be able to trust, um, the things that we're doing and, and respect the things we're doing. That's, that's huge. Yeah, I think so too. It's, it's quite honestly, anytime that we get a coach on this broadcast, it's very flattering. Uh, that they would even consider, you know, coming on with us. But, you know, hey, look, I mean, we have a lot of fun. I think uh, we ask good questions, and, um, you know, we really appreciate your help, their help. So, all right, well, since we're, we're, we're not going to start our um, evaluation of the uh, power rankings until next week, uh, yeah. at least get right. everybody with two games under their belts or hold Yeah, games. exactly. Um, but we'll start uh, – we've got some – actually some very – Interesting matchups here in week three that I want to run by you to get your opinion. And quite honestly, I think the game of the week in District 3 is Steel High and Middletown with the talent and the history of these two programs. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that's going to be a very good game because, uh, you know, Steel High took that L last year. Um, they're going to be a lot better this year and they're going to be more prepared. But again, you know, like I talked about before, Middletown is very, very, very physical, you know, led by Tajay Brody. Uh, he, he's very good. Their quarterback, Tony Powell, very athletic. 
Uh, he had a fantastic game last week. Um, so I, I just – but still high, you know, they have Makai Flowers, the uh, quarterback can get him the ball. So I think that game is going to be a lot better this year, but I still, I still like Middletown. I, I just think they have, after losing last year no. to why I'm missing, I, I just think – they're, they're going to be a lot better than people think. And I, I don't think um, – the game will be closer than it was last year. But I, I, just, I think Middletown is, is on a mission this year. Very interesting. Uh, I You know, look, I like Coach Irby. I like that Steel High team. I think that this yeah. is their year. And, uh, you know, I like them in this game. And, you know, y- your, your buddies in Columbia have a really a tough game there with Octorara. What do you think about that one? Yeah, Octorera has a lot of good athletes down there. Uh, I've been down there before. I had a quarterback from New Oxford. Um, I had some other guys at Octorera, a guy at Oxford. So um, the, Oxford is kind of like a com- Columbia to me, but just a little bit bigger, a bigger school. So they always have athleticism. They have talent. But sometimes I think they're, they're playing like bigger teams. So um, they got numbers down there. They got athletes. I mean – that's going to be a very good game. And I think this will be a great test for Columbia to see if if they are who they think they are. You know, Denny Green, mm-hmm. flashback there. So. <laughs> and Octorara, not, not your traditional Lancaster Lebanon League team. You know, they've only joined the league just a couple of years ago and what have you. So um, yeah. I think it's a very intriguing matchup. And, uh, you know, but I do, you know, look, I'm on the Columbia bandwagon with you. It's It's hard to argue with those guys, like you said. Uh, you know, I've done some basketball games too, athletes, the community, you know, uh, hard to argue that the Columbia, you know, is going to uh, not win that game. And maybe the marquee matchup in the Lancaster Lebanon League, or at least one of them this week is uh, Mannheim Central going to that juggernaut of uh, Warwick. I mean, uh, what do you think about that one? Yeah, that's that, that's going to be a tough game for Mannheim Central. Um uh, but, the, you know, the guys all summer, you know, working with those guys and talking with them, they're, they're ready for that game, you know. But, you know, I, work looks solid. They look even a little bit sharper than they did last year. Um, you know, Manheim Central did lose a lot. But I think, again, Coach Hahn, uh, Coach Williams, that, that staff over there, those guys, are gonna, they're going to be prepared. And, it's gonna, and, and as they do every single week, it's going to come down to the kids executing. So, if the kids can, you know, buy into the game plan, guys do their job, the bottom line is getting guys on the ground. Rucci doesn't run the ball. He doesn't catch the ball. He doesn't throw the ball. So, again, he's going to do what he does. He's going to be a factor. But so you got to be able to understand that he's going to take off, take away one side of the field, but he can only block one or two people at a time. Everyone else has to still do their job and be able to get to the ball. You know, but work looks sharp. They look very good this year. Um, so it would be interesting to see. Um, Man, I'm saying you're definitely going to be fired up and ready to go. So that's one thing we do know. So that game is going to be very, very interesting to, to see what happens. That's really kind of a scheduling quirk that Mannheim Central's on the road to both Cocalico and Warwick um, yeah. this season uh, or, or this year. And, yeah, but they will, uh, they'll never make any excuses at all. They will not know. make excuses I, at all. I know that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely yeah. not. There, you know, it's uh, there's no excuses there. But uh, – you know, boy, it's it's hard to see them going into Warwick and winning that game um, mm-hmm. after, you know, the fact that, uh, you know, they might be a little bit down after the loss of Cocalico. So uh, Warwick, obviously one of the teams, uh, one of the stalwarts really in 5A, you know, in, in District 3. So uh, uh, I like Warwick in that game. And the first game in Section 1 in Burke's Catholic's history – um, they're hosting an undefeated Daniel Boone squad. Uh, yeah. Now, you talked about, you know, uh, Burke's Catholic, and, and I saw them last week against Cedarcliff, you know, a 5A team on the road. I mean, go toe-to-toe with these guys, and it took overtime to finally settle it. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but what are, your, what are your thoughts on that? Burke's Catholic really stepping, out, stepping it up, Moving into section one, and Daniel Boone off to an awful good start. What do you think? Yeah, I, I uh, talked to, I texted Coach Flowers this morning um, just to say congrats on a you know, great start to the season and things of that nature. So he's going to have that team ready to go. Um, I, I usually 
spend time with that with uh, Daniel Boone in the summers, training the team in the summers. But obviously, due to the COVID nineteen, right. I wasn't able to get there this year. Um, but they're going to be ready to go. But like you said, Burks Catholic's very, 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 very good this year. So uh, the quarterback's making a lot of throws. Cacioni's doing well. Um, Kobe stepping up. Like I mean, just it, they look very, very good this year. Their offense line looks good uh, with Luke Hughes and those guys. But so um, I, I just. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting because, you know, Daniel Boone is going to be very physical. Uh, they have a, a lot of good athletes, a lot of young men that I work with on their team. So it's going to be interesting. But like you said, after uh, what Brooks did with uh, Cedar Cliff, um, I mean, it's going to be tough to, uh, to, to, to go against them in this game. But I just, you know, I think Coach Flowers, kind of like we talked about with Columbia, he's really slowly turning that program around. And if they were able to get this win against Burns Catholic, I think he's, he's, he, you know, he'll get really, 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 really get a lot of support from Douglasville and those, I mean, I don't know, uh, that Daniel Boone uh, in that area out there. So, but I mean, Burks Catholic definitely going to be a tough out. You know, Burks Catholic, um, very surprising. I'll tell you what, very surprised. I should say surprising. Um, they're maybe as balanced as I've ever seen them. As far as from on offense, Brad Hoffman, Chris and Caccione, um, you know, they can get the ball out there. And now with Trace Brown, um, you know, they're just trying to figure out how to use him. I mean, he had a sack yeah. interception and a touchdown reception last week. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So they're, like they're said, just they, got, figuring, they have the guys. Right. They're just figuring out how to use him. Um, mm -hmm. I think they've got, you know, a good running attack defensively. Um, you know, uh, you know, Trace Brown, I mean, he's, he's a shutdown corner. Um, yeah. So clearly, uh, you know, uh, Burks Catholic, even though, you know, with a one and one record, um, it's going to be very interesting. It's nice to see that they were able to, to get a, a, a decent schedule put together. Um, right. You know, and, uh, and literally at the last minute. <laughs> literally at the last minute. I mean, they didn't know who they were playing. At least they knew who they were playing this Friday after the game on fr last Friday, so they at least could get in and start doing some film work and everything like that. So credit to, you know, Burke's Catholic and literally playing on instinct uh, for two weeks. Um, but, you know, it's their first section one game in uh, school history. They're stepping up with the big boys, uh, you know, across the board here in the Burke's league, uh, going up against the likes, starting with Daniel Boone and, uh, but I like Burks Catholic in that game. It's their home opener. You know, they've been road warriors and literally didn't know where they were going when they went into school on Wednesday, where they were going on Friday. So uh, I like BC there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, another undefeated matchup, quite honestly, Bermudian and York Catholic um, in yeah. New York Adams there. Um, thoughts on that game? I mean, that's very interesting. Yeah, that is going to be a very interesting game. Your Catholic is just being your Catholic. But Bermudian Springs, um, they had that group last year that was kind of get their feet wet. And now, they, again, they're 2-0 uh, they're too. But um, you kind of favor your Catholic because of the history um, and being in this position before. So I, I look at them. I look for them to probably pull this game off. And I, I do as well. I like your Catholic. I think that. You know, I think that they're a more seasoned team there. And uh, the game of the week that uh, myself and my buddy Kerry Moyer will be broadcasting, and actually I think it's the first time uh, Governor Mifflin has had anything out on the Internet in years. I'm honored uh, to have the opportunity to broadcast this game. Quite a talented team over there. Unfortunately, they had a little um, issue where they had to shut down for a few days. But they're hosting uh, Mifflin County. Um, a very interesting matchup from, uh, you know, the mid pen. Uh, uh, that's about as far as you can go in district three going from Mifflin County to governor oh, yeah. Mifflin. What do you think about that game? Yeah. I, I mean, in Mifflin County, they're not a bad team at all. So uh, it'd be interesting to, to, to see what they're able to do uh, with the way uh, the midline that governor Mifflin runs, but now, they're not just midline. They're doing spread. They're doing eye. Uh, they're doing one back. They're doing a lot of different things with, with Nick Singleton back there. And then 
Cam, not only is he playing tight end, run, they have him also running the ball, and then they have Strouser. So uh, they have Aiden Martin. They, they have a lot of guys, and they're very, 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 very physical. So, I mean, it, it, and, they're, and they had a week off. They're going to be ready to go. And plus it's a home game. So, you know, <laughs> Mifflin County, like I said, you, you, you're, you're on that bus and you've got that long bus ride. I mean, that's tough, especially in high school. It's, it's tough for the, for the focus and, and get ready to go out to be on the bus that long. But, you know, you don't count anybody out nowadays because, you know, anything can happen. Uh, they're going to be prepared and ready to go. But I like uh, how physical Governor Mifflin has been so far, and I think they will be. One of the games I've been looking forward to uh, for, you know, a good bit here is, uh, you know, seeing Mifflin here this season. Uh, I haven't seen him. I haven't even gotten over – to see the practice. Uh, quite honestly, I've tried to stay away from practices, um, you know, because mm-hmm. of the COVID and everything like that. I don't think that it's quite honestly politically correct uh, and that. And uh, so, uh, but I like Governor Mifflin in this game and I like Governor Mifflin. I think a lot of people like Governor Mifflin uh, for the talent and the physicality um, and the vers- versatile offensive sets that, You know, Mm -hmm. and they, you know, they proved out against Wilson in their first game. Hard to believe that this is only their second game of the season. And this is, you know, going to be October the 2nd. Uh, Right. You know, so I think these guys, just like you said, they are going to be heck to bear. And I would expect that they're going to want to put out a big show. So uh, I would expect Governor Mifflin's going to come out on top, you know, Mm -hmm. in this game. So, but, uh, so, wow, that does it for our third show of the year. I mean, it was pretty well jam-packed. I mean, uh, hard to believe. Yeah. I mean, we almost went 45 minutes, and it just seemed like we just started. What do you think? Absolutely. But, again, like, I love the format. I love the things we're doing, um, you know, based off of the situation, circumstance. But, again, we're still able to do what we need to do and having Coach Mannion on. Uh, and each week trying to get a different coach on it. I, it just, it's exciting, man. We're, we're no matter even through COVID, we're able to do what we love to do. And that's what the best part is. Yeah. And, 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 if, and for all the schools too, it's nice to see um, that, you know, that a lot of these schools and a lot of these programs are saying, Hey, look, you know, we can compete and putting things together and it doesn't have to be perfect, but, but let's give these kids an opportunity and let's kind of get some sense of normalcy back in our lives. And the best thing that can happen, quite honestly, is high school sports uh, to do that. So it takes our mind off of things. And, um, you know, it's a great escape. And everybody talks about it, but now we're living it. And I think everybody's thankful that we're continuing to move forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen, thanks you, Pat. Thanks uh, very much to you, my friend, for uh, this time. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, next week, you know, hopefully we'll have another coach uh, sitting in the hot seat with Daryl asking him all the tough questions, right? (laughs) (laughs) We like to have fun with these coaches. We like to have fun. So for Daryl Daniel, hey, my name's Bruce Badgley. Thanks for joining us on Fresh Set of Downs. Checking us out in the small player Big Play app. Take care, everybody. So long.